everyone, and welcome to another episode of I Hate It Here, where we spend approximately 90 minutes hating the world so you don't have to. I'm your host, Richard Lewis. Joining me is he, well, occasionally does, I want to say, these days. Uh, it is, of course, Sammy Davis, the the, the the voice it that uh, is rapidly at risk of being replaced by a soundboard. AI, mate. AI. It's the future, mate. I've seen some of that shit. I wouldn't be surprised, mate. I wouldn't be asked. Fair enough. Hmm. Well, good. That's <laughs> I accept well, your as resignation. As long as it's AI, mate. It's like, you know, if it's not even another human being at that point. How can you feel bad? It's like, yeah, I've been beaten by, by the AI, mate. It's not even my fault, is it? No, that, that is true. It's not. Uh, but yeah, we should uh, we should certainly be doing more of this, I think. Um, that's why we're doing it basically at the, at the very early time of 2 p.m. Before the watershed, Sam. We need, yeah. to, we need to think about that for the content. I've already, like, as I was, like, looking at the one I had scripted out, I'm already thinking, do I want to talk about the phenomenon called piss talk at two in the afternoon? It's Probably not. Talk, Basically, a number of uh, publications have decided to cover the phenomenon of people talking about water sports on TikTok. Which, of course, TikTok is a psyop. Right. TikTok as... is a psyop. <laughs> yeah. TikTok, <laughs> this show uh, uh, mentally. TikTok oh, yeah. is a psyop about piss talk to get your TikTok going. Yep, exactly, mate. I'm glad. See, this is all the stuff you miss, Sam. You haven't checked in at the office for a while. Um, basically, we're, we're, we're obsessed with TikTok and water sports and everything else. So um, I'm going to try and on the fly cut some of the more risque bits out as it is the afternoon. We are going to be watching the England game a little bit later on as well. I, I prepared today, Sam. I went and had, you know, I had miniature pork pies. <laughs> in honor. Yeah, yeah, in honor of the England game. I have a sausage roll in, in, in the fridge. And then some I, I might even eat on air. Yeah, I, well, yeah. And, and some gammon, a cup of tea. And, uh, oh, and I had a Jaffa cake. Well, me, man. We I woke live. up. I had some fucking bratwurst. I had some sauerkraut. Right, I see, I I see where this is going. Fucking delicious German beers and that. I don't know. <laughs> no, listen. Hit come on, anyone but England. That's all yeah, I, mean. I know, right? So, this is the problem. Um, I, I woke up today. And I was thinking, I'm going to cheer on Germany. I am going to do it. But it just doesn't... Nah, it, you've it, lived there I, long enough, it's fair enough. But I, I ain't dropping the beef yet. Same no, but it's, France, mate. I was, I'm landing France went out, to be honest. I, I fucking yeah, but hang on. Bit. If we're talking I about beef, Sam, I don't want to get historical, but, you know... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I know, just, but... I, 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 I don't just know. don't know if yeah, I'm ready, is all I'm saying. The thing is, right... <laughs> I don't know. It's, yeah, I think it's fine. You're always going to have the two world wars, you know. You're always going to have that meme when mm. I, whenever they start saying they're like, yeah, two world wars. Though. So you're all, you're never going to lose that. But I can't deal with England winning the Euros, man. Yeah, no, and I don't want that either. But especially now that like France has gone out, right? And obviously all the English fans, the the ogre, the Uruguay <laughs> that have been bred specifically to support England, you just give them a drum. You just give them a drum, you give them an England shirt, and you just watch them go, don't you? Within seconds, they've destroyed the shirt, rejected <laughs> clothing as a concept, and it's just bang, bang, bang. Come on, England! Push England! 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 <laughs> yeah, it is, it is a repulsive phenomenon, isn't it? It is like something... It is like something out of a horror movie. Do you mean you I can't handle it? And also, right, here's the thing. If England were actually good, if they were true to great, I wouldn't be as arsed by them winning. But they're so mm. shit. They're all, they're always been shit, considering the players they have. They're so repulsively shit. And it just makes me yeah. shit uh, sick to think they could, like, graft out a win. It's like, nah. When do you deserve it, sure? Like, if they go to the World Cup and they're sick, I wouldn't be that arsed by them winning. But not this. They, they've been playing shit. I don't want them to win. Yeah, they have been playing dog shit. They really are. I'm all in on Switzerland, mate. That's my um, dream. One, one, of the things, one of the things I love about it as well is like, it, right, imagine not being able to put your transfers on hold like while, you're, while your national team is playing at a, at a tournament that like, they're highly fancy to do well in. And it's just like every day, Grealish going to Man United, Harry Kane. Uh, <laughs> an official bid has been tabled. It's like, where's, where, where are the players' where's fucking heads going to be at? Yeah, well, yeah, where's your fucking pride? It's raw, of course. You've given up, haven't you, Sam? You've given up. But yeah, so I, I am going to watch that later. But for now, in a new segment on I Hate It Here, uh, I love it here. 
um i i know a lot of people thought it was a meme something we were just doing in, in a kind of uh newly thought out way to torment dust uh but obviously i do i've been following uh the the disc golf ever since dust introduced me to it and we had a moment the other this might be disc golf's coming out like this would be in all the in, into the mainstream like. yeah well basically the great uh, what people are calling the greatest shot in disc golf history has occurred and what's brilliant about it sam is it involves our two favorite fucking characters from from when we were our watching it live hero, during yeah hero. yeah exactly so for those who don't know what we did because we don't know anything about disc golf really and at the end of the day and i know i say this as an esports guy right it is just cunts launching frisbees around right let's be real um basically i reckon a couple of tramps got drunk and were throwing frisbees into a bin <laughs> in a park to sort of like 4 a.m. to just like chuckle into themselves. Nah, it definitely started with them. like stoners, mate, trying to throw it into a bin or something like, dude, I bet you can't get it in the bin, bro. Yeah, maybe. I bet you That's can't also throw a good there, bro. That's oh, also shit. a really good shit. Oh, oh, shit, you did it. Oh, shit, bro. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. You're the creepiest Macbeth. <laughs> so, anyway, right? So, anyway, uh, we were watching it and, uh, you know, uh, we were giving names to all of the characters now and writing our own storylines about it because, you know, when you work in the broadcast business like I do, you know, on Emmy nominated <laughs> TV shows, you know, storylines are important, right? Like you have to make it accessible. So for our audience, there was a guy with long hair and he looked like a stoner and we said he's the cult leader. I can't even remember his name. I think it was and... Conrad. I swear there was some repetition. Cult leader mm. Conrad sounds right. Like... Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, uh, see the show. Uh, yeah, Colin Ryan. Yeah, yeah, right. And then obviously, uh, the the best disc golf player of all time is a guy who saw uh, it was uh, called Paul Macbeth, I believe. Yeah. And he's 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 sort of a bit of a cunt. We've decided now. Uh, that's based on absolutely think, yeah, nothing. But it's because he wins everything. That's why. So you know. What I mean? Well, no, it's, it's not uh, just that. He's got that face, and he takes himself a bit, a bit serious. Smug, yeah. He? yeah, a bit. Yeah, you he know. Like now listen, I know. <laughs> Yeah, he just turned up with a card to a fucking disc golf tournament. That's pretty outrageous. Isn't it? Now, listen, I know I'm doing that same thing that mentally ill people do, right? On we're doing internet. it as a joke. I don't actually think. Yeah, Paul I don't McBeth actually think Paul McBeth is creepy. Creep yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'd be it's willing. It's like WWE. To... We've got to, we've got to make the heels and we've got to make the baby faces, or whatever. The well, actually, you know, yeah, you, yeah, but I sort of do suspect it though. But that's based <laughs> not on. That's not based on me being mentally ill, Sam. That's based on me being a good reader of people, because I have to be a good reader of people in my line of work. And I'm not basing it on a tweet, am I? I am basing it on, on years of disc golf excellence, aren't I? So if you if you think about it that way, uh, I think uh, there might be more than enough there to judge whether or not he's now. now Creep might be pushing it. Cunt, I'm 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 all right with that. He's but a anyway, bit of a smug bastard, like I'll give you that. Yeah, see, there you go. He has got a coupon on him, hasn't he? So, yeah. so anyway, we it was it, this is perfect for you, Sam, because it involves cult leader. I think, if I remember rightly, yeah. Uh, basically, right, he was in a tournament against Creep Me Macbeth, and Creep Me Macbeth was, of course, winning it because it's a disc golf tournament, and he was there with his caddy going, <laughs> another this one in the bag, bag bro. Yeah, like, yeah, shit yeah, exactly. Regard, yeah, yeah, exactly, mate. Like some mad fucking, like, Adam Sandler fucking sporting <laughs> villain, right? Uh, I've been in the bag, up. bro. <laughs> right, and up, st up steps cult leader, and he's got to hit up and what they call an ace, like a fucking hole in one. And it's on this mad bendy circuit, right? And, uh... If he if he does it, he has to hit an old hole in one to force a playoff, which is where it's like everyone's yeah. tied up and you have another round. And basically, if he doesn't do that, it, it's so another trophy. To so he steps about well, fucking shoot, let's shoot just... a McGavin gets his mother's out. Oh, <laughs> you eat pieces of shit for breakfast, homie. He gets wrecked. Right, so, ready? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, three, three, two, one, go. And does Conrad? He's trying to make this right. I imagine he's, he's going to take a stab he's at it. He's out. got such great control with these left to rights with his putter or mid range. 
This is like the Canadian clutch, mate, but twice as good. Like, imagine oh, for that new mind. No, this is unbelievably good. Like, this is unbelievably good. Look at him, though. No. Having a stretch, like, he's got it all. Measuring up the form. It shows. It's not just cunts Against going frisbees. Can't see. Yeah, into the sun. Can't see a fucking thing, neither. Right? Can't see a fucking thing. He's Marvel. like, fuck it. Yeah. Right, here we go. And then... Alex! Yeah, mate, he's full Peter Kidd. Watch wild. this. Crowd's going Watch. wild. Crowd's going wild. Ah, ah, mate, look at it. The crowd's going fucking mad. No way! Fuck no Ovid. Way. Fuck Ovid. Fuck Ovid, I'm going in. Fuck Ovid. <laughs> fuck Ovid. <laughs> Mask up, I'm boys. Fuck him. Look at the crowd. They're loving it. Oh mate, they've, they've gone, they've gone fucking. Ah, I've yes. gone mental. No I've gone mental. Dude, uh, that's the clutchest thing I've ever the seen. Clutchest the clutchest I've thing I've ever seen. seen. Yeah, seen. Just well, golf doing the commentary well, there. Seth now needs to get up. Look at that guy streaking with the American oh, fucking fair. flag shorts on, just running their own shit. Let's. America did this. America did this. Yes! Yes! Techno Vikings at South Door! Yes! Step back, step back, everyone calm down. Yeah, step back, guys. This is, this is fucking disc golf, not anarchy, bro. So, so there you have it, right? And then it turned out, basically, in the better one to throw off. Yeah, he did, he did, mate. Oh, make. big. He did. So, uh, basically, you can see there, Peter, when we were watching it, mate, this is just stuff from a year or two ago everyone was going fucking mental right like and, and, but it was only about 10 people now there yeah. was easily like 100 people all right there. we've contributed to that in some way I yeah admit, i think so too if one of you was there watch this show i beg that you mess with like another angle i'm just playing another angle yeah look at that mate great in it hell of a shot mate what was my fair play doing what's hell of a shot so there you go, disc golf's mainstream. Now, me and you basically have made disc golf mainstream, Sam. How does yeah, it I'm fit? taking credit for that. Like, that's all yeah. on me. I did 100%. that. 100%. 100%. So, he's, and, and of course, the fact Paul Macbeth gets wrecked, it just makes it oh, doubly even sweet. Sweeter, like, even yeah, sweeter. You'll notice, yeah, like, no shots in the crowd of Paul Macbeth even doing polite applause. Uh, couldn't find him. Nowhere to be found. Cry yet he was in his trailer with his caddy. Bet, bet he got in the car immediately after losing and just... Set told his caddy, you're walking home, bro. It's fucking drunk. <laughs> Next time I ask for a fucking 4.8, don't <laughs> hand me your 4.9, bitch. <laughs> I don't even know. I told you to spray lead on his fucking frisbee. <laughs> I told you to spray lead on his mask. <laughs> on his lips. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, fuck it. Uh, yeah, disc golf, guys, it is legit. It is legit. Uh, right, anyway, this is I hate it here, not I love it here. So let's just start uh, on shaky ground immediately, shall we? Um, let's just do some stereotypes. We all have stereotypes in this day and age, don't we? How's this, Sam, for the most Italian story of all time? Um, this is the story, personal favourite. Uh, envious, actually. I mean, this is just a great fucking story. I, I wish we could get away with this. I mean, you sort of have given it a good go. You just haven't reached this guy's <laughs> tent. This is an Italian hospital employee who literally skipped work on full pay for 15 years. <laughs> He's not Mate, turned I'm up. I'm just saying, I bet it was more work to figure that out, surely, than to actually just go to work. Like, how did he manage that? Has he, like... He must be not. Wait, he was on the box as well. How does that happen? Well, I don't know, mate. It's fucking brilliant, though. Absolutely landed, I hope they isn't it? Explain like... how he's managed to pull out. That is sick, mate. <laughs> that is now, sick. Obviously, it takes on a dark complexion when you know if you're thinking like, oh, he works in a hospital. Well, yeah, it is a shame uh, he works in a hospital. Yeah, yeah, but whatever. At the end of the day, oh, you don't know the full story, do you? Basically, he was just getting paid, and he thought, fuck it, I'm not going in. And they're paying me, and I'm still not going in, and no one's asked where I am, and they're still paying me. Well, he can't and, be like, doing I, much work, I agree. Well, I think that's a managerial failure, because exactly. look, it even says here, I'll, I'll read it, I'll read it a bit, right? Um, a hospital employee in Italy has been accused of skipping work on full pay for 15 years, <laughs> legend. The, the man's al alleged to have stopped turning up to work. At, uh, I can't even say that, what's that? She had... Chiachiao. Chia Chicho. <laughs> I don't know, man. Chiachio. I'm saying Chiachio. Chiachio Hospital. Sees, like the Welsh use L's, man. I don't know. What yeah, I know. It's, yeah, it's, it's a mad one, isn't it? 
Chiaccio Hospital in the southern city of Catanzaro in 2005. He's now been investigated for fraud, extortion, don't know about that, and abuse of office, according to the Italian news agency Answer. He was reportedly paid 538 hundred thousand euros in total over the years so he's just made a cool half a mil basically for 15 um, years or... yeah for 15 years work obviously but he didn't work did he could True. have had another job on the side is half a mil for free or could have doubled up yeah you can't argue with that mate if someone had said do you want half a mil over 15 years what do i have to do now oh, all right yeah, yeah. i'll do i'm happy with that also, six managers he's got through in his 15 years. He's just been permanently slipping through the cracks. Yeah. So six managers at the hospital are also being investigated in connection with the alleged absenteeism. But he got arrested. They rocked up at his house and basically said, like, have you not been going into work for 15 years while <laughs> been getting paid? And no, he's I have gone... Been. I have been at work yeah, every day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for real. Like, I mean, work, work fucking every sucks. Day. We're not... We're not supposed to do it. And they've gone, yeah, but you have been you have been taking all that money, haven't you? And he's gone, yeah, obviously. No one, you know, they didn't have to give it me. Yeah, I know. Like, I didn't... That's what I mean. Is this actually... For, I mean, it kind of is fraud, but at the same time, you're mm. supposed to notice at what point is the negligence outweigh the fraud. You know what I mean? I've had it happen to me, like, for a week when I've been doing part-time or whatever. And someone's doubled up a pay slip and I've said no about that. Am I a thief, Sam? I'm probably Anna. I don't know. Probably just admitted right. to a crime now. At what Twitch. point probably is negligence banned. punishable by just not telling them they fucked up? You know what I mean? Like if what I mean, you know, up and not realizing sure, and work, I'll be honest. Do though, if, and tell if it got to like three months and the money was still turned up, I probably am going to call someone and be like, "You don't know I've left, right?" Like, you know, probably I'm going to say something. Fifteen years though. Fair it's play, man. Like, because it, it depends how he left. Maybe, like, someone really pissed him off. Like, he's like, fuck it, I'm never coming to work again. And then he's just like, oh, money still showed up. Fuck, I ain't going to remind them. It's up to them. They'll figure it out eventually. And then he got to, like, year three. He's like, I don't think they're ever going to notice, but I'll just do fuck all for a living. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But, yeah, I, I think, you know, for me, I was on the fence. Because it is, it's kind of, it, hospital money is kind of public money and... Uh, but equally, yeah, yeah, but all thing, work sucks. As a citizen, if I had the choice, I'd much rather punish the people responsible for figuring out who the fuck's in work than him. I'd much, I don't yeah, want to send fair. him to jail. I want to send the people who are looking over the money to jail. Like, how the fuck have you noticed this guy's just not at work and paid him half a That is fair. Years. Like, if, if the managers ended up having to pay it back and not him, that'd be, that'd be the best outcome. Yeah. In a, in a way. Uh, but yeah, so fair play to him. I I, I admire his moxie. That's what I'm going to say. But from 15 years not going into work, this story is just awful. To four years trapped on a boat, just stranded on a ship. This is a, this this will get made into a movie, but it'll probably be like heavily Americanized and starring Christian Bale in the lead role. Uh, as he slow, as he goes all method and transforms himself. But it's a story about a sailor uh, called Mohammed Aisha, um, who joined uh, a, a ship called the MV Aman uh, back in May of 2017, and the boat uh, ended up getting stranded off the Egyptian coast, and uh, for, because of all of the rules about it and all that. Nobody was no coming way. to get him. So it's yeah. not like they didn't know or couldn't find him. They just, like, legally, legal handcuffs. Yeah, he was in... So, uh, mate, the full story is absolutely insane. So, right, basically, uh, th right, the ship he was on got detained at the Egyptian at an Egyptian port, uh, and it was held because uh, it didn't... It wasn't up to spec. It had a bunch of expired safety equipment, right? And that should have been just... Well, just get the we'll just get it repaired or we'll replace yeah, yeah. the bits you know whatever you have to do but then the lebanese contractors who'd hired the ship didn't pay for the fuel and the owners of the ship were from bahrain and their company was like well we're fucked like you you've got to pay for the fuel we're in financial difficulty we can't just rock up and pay to fuel a fucking you know ocean yeah. liner right it doesn't work like that so the the captain of the ship was Egyptian. He was allowed to just get off the boat. Walk right? home like that. 
Yeah, and, 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 he, and he said, fuck this nightmare. I'm not fighting to get the money from fucking Lebanon, you know, Lebanon or Bahrain or whoever's paying for the fuel, right? But we do need fuel, don't we? So I can't be asked until there's fuel in the boat. I'm not coming back. But because he was in, because he was an Egyptian citizen, it was docked in Egypt. He off, could yeah. just go. But as he as he left, he said, "Oh, Mohammed, you're in." <laughs> oh, mate, fuck off, it? <laughs> no joke, mate. He's gone. You're in charge. You're the next one up. Yeah, right. You're in charge of the boat Dead now. So, so he made it the legal guardian, right? So he was the legal guardian. Well, that's binding. Of you can just force it onto someone like it's on you no drive <laughs> yeah. i've wrote it in the book i, I mean i don't know I, I i don't know i i don't know about that but basically he was just left in charge or and maybe like this guy didn't realize how dire it was he was like oh look i'm gonna get off i'm gonna wait till the fuel comes when the fuel's on i'll come back i'll drive you home for now you're in charge you be so maybe he was like all right it'll be a week or something we'll wait till we get a few and he'll come back from his house and we'll fuck up so maybe he's like yeah yeah okay that's fine i'll take care of the boat for a week but we basically what they said was if he abandoned his post and keep in mind he had nowhere to go it's not like it's not like they were just gonna let him in in egypt right yeah. Which is the, which was the closest place it was, but he was also told he would be prosecuted and sent to prison what? if he abandoned his post with the boat. Well, right? How did the other captain get that? He abandoned his ship. Yeah, well, he put someone in charge, and That's then just mental. like what? Well, he, he can do the same dark. thing. I, well, everyone else got off the I, boat. I, I guess he was I the last know, one. Mate. Like, uh, tag you on it. No takes his back. He's ta da ta da ta. <laughs> don't get me wrong the system does sound like an absolute clusterfuck i'm like he literally did i'm the captain now or him but in reverse and walked you away the captain yeah now. you're Ta -da. the captain now Ta -da for the bitch rickles and he's gone <laughs> but anyway what well, this is where it gets really crazy right because between 2017 and 2019 the problem doesn't get resolved, oh my right? God. There's no fuel going in the boat. The boat's still still there. The boat is still owned by this company in Bahrain, and although they're technically like staring at the abyss of liquidation by this point. So now it's just more who is going to come and get this boat and, and take it the so fuck no away? One want, basically, it was all because no one wanted to pay like the 50 grand or whatever. No, yeah, no one wanted to fuel up the boat. Well, no one could afford to fuel up the boat. And so basically, the, the rest of the crew, and it was a skeleton crew to begin with, they all start jumping off the boat and swimming away in the middle of the night. Fucking so Ma hell. so Mohammed's just waking up going, oh, where's Ahmed? God, he's fucked off, mate. He's done one. He's not the captain. He's just swimming away, like trying to get to land. Yeah. Yep, see, yeah. Right? So in the end, by, by August of 2019, this oh, fella man. is alone on this boat. Two years in, like. Right? And it's got no fuel. And obviously, on on a boat, that means no power. Fuck it now. So he's on essentially a derelict, rusting hulk of a ship that he's legally obliged to stay aboard. All this time, by the way, is the kicker. He's been promoted to captain. Go fuck yourself. It's all unpaid. <laughs> Fucking so, hell. so he's not even on the clock. He just legally can't leave. But they're not paying him to stay. So That's then, so oh. Mate, that's 2019. Mate, I haven't even mother got... died in 2018 as well while he's on the ship. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Dead mother. Right, mate, I haven't, mate, I haven't even got to the maddest part of the story. So there he is. He's been on this boat now for three fucking years. A, a, a year of it, completely alone, doing his head in. And then there is a massive storm in March of 2020. And it Fuck just... It blew it five miles out to sea. Fair play to this guy to not just fucking swan dive off a top, but I would have just been like, you know what, I'll let the storm take I'll just fucking swan dive off a top, break my neck. But four years in, are you mad? Fuck that. Like, yeah. I would have snapped. So, so it, 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 it got blown out to fucking sea, and he was just out there again all this time. And in the end, it's just like he's been. No one still wants this boat. He's still out. In the end, they had to come and get him. Who they just. It was just. Like? Um, so there was like some rescue service. And it took um, him this long. So hang on. The whole time there was an option to just take him off the boat, and it took him four years. Don't know. Oh, we can just come get him. Like. Right. Well, hang on. So I'll I'll, I'll read. I'll read. Maybe you they like what, for what they for, said. Forgave the guardianship. Maybe they like said, "Don't worry about the legal guardianship of the boat, mate. The, the owners don't want it. The guy who pays for the fuel don't want it. Fuck it. You forget the boat." 
Well, basically, right, there's this thing called the International Labour Organization, and they say there's like is cases and even the rarest of cases. Fuck like there's about know. there's about two hundred and fifty cases around the world where crews just get left to fend for themselves on these boats, right? Uh eighty five of those cases happened in twenty twenty, <laughs> which was twice as many as the as the year before it in twenty nineteen. So anyway, right, what happened was his situation was deemed to be critical, uh, which yeah. was probably critical about six in months 2018. in. Yeah, probably was, like, probably was critical. But anyway, um, so th this rescue operation got in touch with, like, the people who owned the boat, uh, and that, that's called Tyler Shipping and Marine Services. And they basically oh. were like, look... We, we we we're not we're not saying we can't we're not saying like we didn't put the guardianship on him, but that is how the law works, and we can't compel a judge to say he's not legally in charge of the ship because someone has to be. Um, and so they were looking. Apparently, they were actively ringing around to find someone who could relieve him of oh, duty. So someone else to go in the prison? Are you mad? Yeah. How do they yeah, find a yeah. volunteer for that, John? Yeah, no. You oh, by yeah. the way, you don't get paid, like. Yeah, yeah, John. Do you wanna do you wanna jump on a ship? And uh, yeah, no, 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 no. It doesn't yeah, move. The route? Where are we going? Yeah, no, like? no, it's not moving. Uh, yeah, not it's moving. kind of out in sea at the moment. Yeah, uh, no power, oh, no right. fuel. You want, to, you want me to drive it back? Like it's been. A, I'll drive. Yeah, that's no, it, no, no, no. We can't do that. Uh, like literally, oh, no right. fuel at all, mate. No fuel at all. Uh, right, so I'm you'll be just on be a out there. Ship, am I? And I'm gonna fill it then. No, no, you'll be on an empty, rusting, derelict ship five miles out to sea, and you can't leave, and we don't know when you can leave. Are you interested? Right. Pay's gonna be great though. Like pay's gotta be great. No, it's unpaid work, actually. Uh, experience. We'll pay you an exposure. Yeah, exactly, mate. Exactly. Fucking <laughs> That's a schmickles if ever there was one. So, I suppose the story does have a happy ending. Uh, it, it, as much as it can. I don't in know. The sense that... They put someone else in the prison. That is the <laughs> Someone yeah. has to replace him. It's like a genie in a lamp or something. Someone always has to replace them, fill the void of the lamp. What the fuck's going on? How can't they just release him? So, but in the, in the end, he was lifted off. He's been allowed to leave. It's been ruled he can leave. Uh, yeah, so they flew him out to eight Cairo. kilometers yeah. as well, like doing that storm. Oh. So he drifted eight kilometers just deeper into this fucking hell. Yeah, mad one. Oh, eh? wait. Oh, there we go. So apparently, the storm blew in closer to the shore. And at that time, he thought it was an act of God because he was now able to swim ashore every few days to get oh, food yeah. and recharge yeah. his phone. Yeah, yeah, he could go. Basically, right? Imagine so that's sneak, how bad it is. Yeah, he had to sneak on land. He had to, so swim. He he had to swim like fucking a mile, half a mile or something every day just to go charge his phone and then swim back. So he could just sit there in the dark staring up at his phone until the battery ran out. The whole time as well, if he gets caught, he is going to go to prison as well because he's abandoned the ship and he's not even supposed to be in Egypt or whatever. Oh, so yeah, he had to go full fully Sam risking Fisher, it like. every time, trying to yeah. get food, trying to charge his phone. Fucking hell. Yeah, man. absolute mental fucking story. So yeah, go check out the full story. He That's is mad. safe. He is off the boat now. It will get I made know the guy who filled. replaced him. Like, who replaced him? Oh, no, like, I who no, 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 no. I don't. That, that job? That, that's the thing. It was, it was just ruled like fuck oh, it. Right, just okay. ab abandon the ship. Like, yeah. there's no one there. I can't like, that took four years. Yeah, mad, isn't it? It's mad. mad. Uh, so there you go. Now. We've had people skipping work, people trapped in boats. Let's do some good old American stereotyping, eh? Because we all we all know that they fucking they just push it, don't they? They just push it. Um, let me. Uh, oh shit! I've I've got the wrong one. Where is it? There it is. Right. This is a story from Oregon uh, about one of our favourite topics on the show: good old gender reveals. Sam, we love a good old gender reveal, don't we? Um. I don't know why people do them. I still don't. I've got to be honest with you. I just don't. Like, nobody cares about your babies. No one cares about your children. No one cares about your stupid, ugly, ordinary children. Least of all your friends who've got stupid, ugly, ordinary children of their own. And, you know, seeing you all joyous in the pre-child phase, right, before you've spent two years wading through shit and puke and sleepless nights, and no sex, and just misery, right, reminds them 
of when they could have got out. <laughs> so it's just a bitter, miserable, wretched affair. Uh, yeah, people think they care. And of course, because Americans are all over. It's a very American thing. I'll be honest, I've never heard of a gender reveal outside of them. Is, any, is anyone yeah, else Yeah, they doing do them, um, but they don't do explosions and shit. You know what I mean? There's no fucking blowing up anything or a plane in the sky usually. It's just like a balloon or something, isn't it? And they yeah. pop the balloon. Yeah. I, I, just, I just don't get it. Like, nobody, nobody cares about... Like, no one cares enough about this. Like, it's... Yeah, there's all sorts going on. You know, the, the American fucking drug of narcissism uh, fuels this. Right, it because is getting into the water supply, man. The internet is going to drain into the water supply everywhere else. Well, it, it's just everything has to be an occasion with an American, doesn't it? Yeah. Everything has to be an occasion. Everything's a holiday. Everything's a fucking gathering. Everything's a big deal. It's like, listen... Life just isn't that significant. Just isn't that significant. So it's all right. You know, I guess if you had to sum up being alive, it's better than it's better the than alternative. Yeah. It's, yeah. But also, there's a pretty solid argument to say it might have been better to just never have existed. <laughs> because you get a bum deal with this. You start out. Everyone tiptoes around it. They lie to you and like, oh, mummy, why did the goldfish die? Why did my pet dog die? Why did Nana die? They all tiptoe around it and they go, oh, well, everybody dies. But don't worry, that won't happen to you for a very long time. Bullshit. Bullshit, by the way. You don't fucking know shit. You don't know. Could be tomorrow. Could be, but even if it isn't, even if I have a great life, not a very long time, is it? And it sneaks up on you. So you get stuck into it. And then the other part they don't tell you. You think, all right, well, fucking 70 years. Maybe you do think that's a long time. That ain't, though, is it? Especially when you spend over half of them fucked up and gimped up and shit and with disease and miserable. <laughs> you know, so it's like 50% of your life fucking sucks. And that's if you've got a good one. It's garbage. What a bum fucking deal. But, you know, whatever. So, anyway, it's just not that significant. Like, not everything has to be or fucking put the party hats on. Let's all have a gap. No, fuck off. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, it's so like, can you just simmer the fuck down? I get it, you're having a baby. Well done. You and everyone else, by the fucking way. It's not hard, is it? Anyone can do it. Well done. Well, not anyone. I can understand sharing it with your close family and your friends or whatever, but it's just like everything now has to be a social media post and everyone, like, if it doesn't get enough likes, it feels like, why do you give a fuck about what random people think about your life, man? Like, why do you care? I know, yeah, and that, that's it, isn't it? And it's all like, right, well, get the camera out, get the camera out. Why? So you can bore another... So, you, yeah, you can bore us all in three months' time with this fucking... Like, you haven't even... They don't even give shit enough time to burn in your brain as a genuine fond memory before they say, oh, you must come round and see the photos. I was just there. I don't need to see the photos. <laughs> uh, the memory, like a Polaroid, is still being fucking formed in my brain. I remember it, it was two weeks ago. I don't need to come round. So we have a gender reveal, the party for that. That's an embarrassment. That's a discreet. And now two weeks, yeah, come come round and watch the photos from the thing you were just at. We'll watch the we'll watch the videos. Haha, <laughs> retweet this for me, but no, fuck off. This is ridiculous. I I I am not this invested in your life. And no one is. And uh, something happens when you're at a certain age and, and you get to, like, fucking suburbia and you think everyone's got to be pals and, oh, we must start hanging out and Saturday nights is fucking let's have dinner and, you know, get babysitters and we'll all meet up and have, like, a fucking double date. Like, what are y'all doing? Like, you don't have to do any of this. It's not what you're supposed to do. So I fucking hate it. And I, like I said, this, the rise of the gender reveal is the most repugnant. Because it's not even. Reveal you're pregnant. All right, go on then. There probably is a handful of people in your life that would care about that. Right? Probably. Probably about six, if you're lucky. Right? But the, the gender of the baby? I don't give a fuck. I just don't care. I just li like I li d would that is that a thing? Cause like, what do you even do? Like, it's not like you can have a preference. It's not that you can sit you know, there. If I'm, on, like I'm on team boy. I'm on team boy. Like, you can't say that. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, basically like 
a, a press reveal, a press conference to say what gifts you're going to buy me in the future. Like, <laughs> is basically what it feels like. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. And then, you know, like, uh, there's this there's this unspoken thing Americans do of one-upsmanship. I hate it. I fucking hate it. Right? They go online. Sorry, this giant bottle of overpriced water is <laughs> so unwieldy and ridiculous. Um, they go online, right? And they look at other gender reveals before they do their gender reveal. Ooh, what are people doing for gender reveals? That's what I mean. It's like, why do you give a fuck? Yeah. Right. What are people doing for gender reveals? And somebody, right, like, ha ha, they pop a balloon, some glitter comes out, right? Ah, look, I go, but it's pink, it's traditional pink. So uh, what I'm saying is, <laughs> in a move, that trick is 90% of Twitter, but <laughs> only 2% of the rest of America. I'm using traditional colours to determine gender, right? So they do that, don't they? Then, right, so they go, okay, well, what else, what else? Let me type in extreme gender reveal, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, you know, someone, I, I've, mate, I saw one, to be fair, buckled me, because it was like, what they were doing was, right, because it's America, and they love baseball, <laughs> it's their national pastime, apparently, um, they, they, the, the woman, the woman, <laughs> the woman threw, uh, the, 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 I imagine the pregnant woman actually, uh, threw a baseball to her husband and he was going to fucking bean it out. Right. Right. And, and, and the ball color, was like loaded to explode. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, and it would reveal a color, you know, again, pink or blue. Right. And so anyway, she throws it at him and oh, he's gone, no. bean, and fucking hit it and it's gone straight into her face. <laughs> it's gone, oh, bit, it's smashed no. her. You, you've got to look it up, right? It's just smashed her in the face, all blue or whatever, like all over her chops, <laughs> fully wrecked, like, oh, yes, have that with your fucking gender reveal, like, fucking hell. So anyway, you look at extreme gender reveals, yeah, it, it, it would have been a boy if she'd lived. <laughs> Because <laughs> I've absolutely fractured her skull in a stupid fucking gender reveal, right? So anyway, it's absolutely ridiculous. So you you do gender reveals, you do extreme gender reveals, and so people go, "Well, how can I make my gender reveal memorable and uh, make it memorable?" How can I get the most views on TikTok? Yeah, make it memorable by not doing one, and all your friends will secretly be, "Oh, thank." Thank you for not being one of those people. But instead, what they do is they they look to just fucking step it up. So we end up with this. This is a story from Oregon. It's absolutely insane. Um, so gender reveal explosion at New Hampshire. Oh, sorry, it was New Hampshire. I thought it was the because uh, it was the Oregonian. Um, so gender reveal explosion at New Hampshire quarry rattles towns in two states. <laughs> a family is accused of using explosives at a New England quarry to announce the sex of their baby, rocking several towns from New Hampshire all the way down to Massachusetts in the process. Okay, no. Neighbours in multiple communities in southern New Hampshire and northern Massachusetts were rattled by the mysterious explosion. According to news outlets, police in the town of Kingston in the Granite State confirmed the explosions were caused by the family revealing the gender of their baby. So, uh, the explosion rattled homes within a 20-mile range. <laughs> Mate. Mate. Now, like... There's been terrorist attacks you wouldn't notice for 20 miles. This is a fucking gender reveal, you plum. What are you fucking... <laughs> how, much, how many... How, how many fucking explosives did you put in that? 20 miles, mate. Right? <laughs> And here's the mad thing. So, after, after, uh, after the explosion, right, it ruined the water supply. Uh, lo lo it contaminated oh, the, it. the... Oh, from lime. Is it a lime quarry or something? Yeah, so, hang on, let me just find it, because, uh, you can have a nice glass of brown water, like, um... But yeah, basically, because it was in a quarry, it fucked up. It all went into the water supply. And so now, when people were pouring water, 
it was fucking brown and fucked up. Here you go. I think I've got a picture of it. Can I can I get that? No. Quality journalism does need my support. But it's gender reveal. Yeah, here you go. Gender reveal using 80 pounds of explosives, mate. Fucking hell. 80 pounds, like. 80 pounds. My so thing yeah, is, as well, it says in this report that it was, they legally obtained it and they had permission to do it on the property. So not only did they do it, some daft cut signed off and it. Like, yeah, that seems fine, mate. 80 pounds of fucking explosives in a quarry. Go for it. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. So, um, but that isn't even the, the most one. Let me find, uh, hang on. I, I didn't put it in this document. But uh, I'll I'll bring it up. So, this, uh, was that it? Uh, no, that is, yeah, that, no, that was another one. I think we already covered that one. Yeah, we did. That was where the wife killed the husband with a pipe yeah. bomb, I think. Yeah, we did cover that. Fuck but anyway, there was another one. I'll, I'll dig it out for another show. But yeah, basically, just blowing up. Multiple towns water supplies to celebrate the fact you're having a kid, you know, that's and nobody cares. <laughs> no, it's and still nobody cares. Now, what's the other thing, uh, that Americans uh love? Obviously, big fan of uh, the old fast food, aren't they? So, uh, this guy. I'm I'm just say sometimes if you're gonna commit a crime, do plan it. Don't commit crimes, but if you are gonna commit one, do do plan it out uh, so you don't end up disappointed uh, like this chap was. Uh, this is a story about a, a guy who went to McDonald's, right, and he he robbed the McDonald's for four fast food, not for the money oh, and no. not yeah, so. He robbed them, and he wanted chicken nuggets, right? He wanted he wanted some chicken nuggets. He said, "Give me the money, so, give me the money in that register, and some chicken nuggets, please." <laughs> please, thank you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> now the problem was he robbed it in the morning. <laughs> Sorry, so, sir. We don't serve nuggets until past ten a.m. Give me the fucking money, or I'll kill you. I've told you once, I'll tell you again. We don't serve nuggets till after 10. Now, listen, I'm going to just say, I don't know. I, I admire this employee's stringent. Reminds me of the fucking, the, no, the woman in the betting <laughs> shop in, uh, uh, is it? Snatch. Yeah, Snatch. He's like, all bets are off. Well, no off. nuggies in breakfast. Right. <laughs> because they must, like, they, they're, they're still on site. You know what I mean? They're still yeah, in so a... mean, like, she could have, they could have put them in a fryer, like, a deep fry, definitely. They're in yeah. the back, like. And obviously, for like, rules, while, you, rules, while, you, while you're rules. stalling, yeah, while you're stalling for the police to get there, what better way to stall them? Go, all right, sir, but just because it's nuggies, the morning, man. yeah, just wait for your nuggies, and obviously he's an idiot, so he's, cause he's robbing a McDonald's at fucking six in the morning for, for like, the $20 <laughs> in the register, right, and some nuggets. Uh, but anyway, no, this, this staff member was so stringent in sticking to policy that even when this <laughs> dude was waving a gun around, sorry, sir, you have to, we, we're happy to supply your food as part of this robbery, but it must be from the breakfast menu, sir. <laughs> Are you mad? He's going to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps a nice McMuffin. Thing is, if he was big brain, mate, what he would have asked for is a bag of nuggies, not cooked. So you get to the fucking freezer, I'll cook myself. Give me a bag of nuggies, I'll have 400 nugs. Give me the nugs. i cook, I got a fryer now, so I'll get them fucking fried. So, it, 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 it is what happens. Actually, to be fair, as well, it says he was unwilling to wait. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> as part of the robbery, he was unwilling to wait for nuggets to be cooked. So he said, what have you got? And accepted a got, double fresh? sausage. Yeah, he said, what have you got? And he accepted a double sausage McMuffin instead. So he ran away with a double sausage McMuffin and $600 uh, and was then identified by CCTV and turned himself in later that day after eating 
the double sausage m- muffin. <laughs> um, and uh, it was then also discovered that it wasn't even a, a, a proper gun. It was uh, an air pistol. So. All th- how how disappointing. Quite <laughs> possibly the worst act of crime I've ever heard of in my entire life. Uh, just so inept. Uh, right. Ooh. What's this one? Oh, God. No, I don't want to get in there. Oh, yeah. Before hang on. Watershed. Yeah, not before the watershed. But yeah, this is. I'll just throw this one in while I look at this other one. You, you'll appreciate this. Um, right. What's the weirdest thing um, you've uh, ever, ever heard of someone being hit with when they're driving? When they're driving? Yeah, they're having a drive. And something bing, comes through the window and cracks them. Nothing What's weird. What's the weirdest thing? It's a brick, I think. I've only ever heard of someone getting it. Yeah, with the brick through, you know, it's got to go through windscreens, brick. so it's got to be hard. Yeah. yeah, the old breeze block off a of uh, bridge or whatever. A coin in a window. None of these are weird. They're just coin, horrible, like, actually. Yeah, it's so just I mean, horrible. Nothing weird, yeah. I don't think. I know people yeah. have right. like, hit wildlife on it, like in the night, but I don't think it's ever gone through the windscreen. Never hit me yet. Mm. Well, um, this was uh, this is a story on abc news about someone having a drive in uh, daytona beach and um it was a 71 year old woman right was driving down in state 95 in florida and a fucking turtle <laughs> oh man i was up. i don't even know me a t- tur- took flight i don't know it right a turtle has flipped up somehow smashed through the windshield <laughs> of a car, right? And smashed her head in, like. <laughs> yeah. Mate, that, well, that sounds to me like it's someone threw a turtle at her, but... <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, how was a turtle got through the windscreen? That's mad. Oh, wait, yeah. maybe a bird was trying to eat it. Mate, because... Yeah, because birds, like, I, I think they do this. They, like, grip a prey and they drag them up high and they drop it, so it's smashed on the ground. So, basically, instead of them trying to, like, slowly kill it, they can just drop from a high height. And he, yeah. So, maybe he was being gripped by an eagle, but the eagle goes to drop him. He's like, ah, smashes the yeah, windscreen, maybe. breaks his landing on a fucking old woman. It's not dead. a bad working theory, actually. That is possible. Like, yeah. So, like, a big eagle or something swoops down... Yeah. thinks right i'll eat this realizes it's a fucking turtle like pecking on its shell like this is a yeah. nightmare bollocks to it drops it and just happens to drop it down onto a road would a turtle land shell first down. i think it would like you know bread lands well, butter, like that. butter down yeah. so it's heavy Mate, side down did you know that a turtle shell sort of like it's all goes into its spine like no it's I not like it's, not, it's like yeah a, it's kind of like a more like a toenail, like it's all connected. Yeah, it's not like I always thought it was like a hermit crab or something as a kid. That oh, they could right, just get yeah. into a shell and just be like, eh. And, and uh, of course, never really thought where the shells were coming from. Like eh? I always thought it was like sense. a like a horn, basically, you know, like a cow or like a cow's hoof, where it just grows out, like, but it's all connected yeah. to the deeper part. But uh, it 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 uh, it's fused with the the what's it called, the dermal bone or whatever. All right. So yeah, mental. That's why, like, you know, when you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not, no, obviously not you, <laughs> not idiots, you know, like, it's not, it's not pleasant for the turtle, like, knocking on his back, like, yeah, you are, you are, off my not, spine. He's, he's spine. <laughs> um, but anyway, so basically, uh, this, this 71 year old woman had her head absolutely caved in by a flying turtle while she was driving in Florida, right? And then, according to a 911 recording, both were surprised by what they found. There, there is a turtle in there, <laughs> the man could be overheard saying. <laughs> a turtle? The daughter exclaimed. An actual turtle? <laughs> no, a fucking fish. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly <laughs> what you did. What do you think, you silly bitch? It's a man like, in a turtle suit. I'm not doing pranks, am I? Like, I'm a first responder, you <laughs> fucking... Not here for the banter. I think that's Leonardo in the back. <laughs> He's just KO do nothing. <laughs> oh, he has an half. Like. So, um, it says, although the woman was not seriously hurt, 
the cut on her head did draw a lot, a lot of blood. The turtle you was know. likely crossing. Oh, they've even got a work in theory. Uh, it, the turtle was likely crossing across the road on the interstate. Got hit by another car, nah. flipped up, nah. and then bullshit you know, theory. Bird. Bullshit bird. theory. There's no way, right? How do you hit? How do you hit a turtle and make it flips in the sky? Also, keep it going so fast that it smashes through another person's windscreen and cuts their head. Do you realize the speed the turtle has to be going to go through a windscreen and cut your head? Like it still had enough force after the windscreen to cut through. It must be going rapid. Yeah, maybe actually. But yeah, I, I don't believe a turtle could get enough speed up. Like, if he's already been hit once, he's going to be going low speed anyway. Even if the the car would have to be going, like, 120. And she, I don't know, was she on the interstate? Maybe. She's on an interstate, I guess. She could be going, yeah. like, 80 miles an hour. I don't know. Is that enough to smash a turtle through your windscreen on your face? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't know if it is. I reckon it'd still bounce off. Windscreens are pretty strong. Like. Well... This turtle fucking straight through, mate. Yeah, but the good news is the turtle was all right. Just a few scratches uh, on its shell. He wore... Mate, there we go. He's walked it off. No, but that's what I mean. Like, I'll tell you one thing. Like, they are fucking hard as nails, mate. Like, it, it, you know, is is something. Would you take this, like, if this was an option, right? Because, like, turtles, right? They are slow. But they live for fucking well, ages. Slow. Tortoises, you're thinking of. Turtles no, tur are, no. Turtles don't. Mate. I don't think they live long. Turtles are rapid little fucking swimmers. No, isn't it? turtles live long, mate. Think about those ones that swim around the sea and just get massive. Like turtles yeah, live forever. Like. These are the fucking swamp turtles, mate. <laughs> there you go. Uh, sea turtles can live up to 150 years, according to this on Google. Because how long does a tortoise live? Tortoise life. They don't live much past eighty in captivity, but captivity fucks with their heads. Oh no, they are pretty similar. Tortoise is fifty yeah. hundred as well. Yeah, that's what they say in captivity. See, captivity wrecks them apparently. Just humans being humans. But yeah. So anyway, right? You get to live for ages, and you're slow in that, right? But you're a good swimmer. And you are hard as nails. Like, you can fly through a fucking windscreen, dorm someone's nan, and just walk away from it like no bother. Like. <laughs> no, it is pretty strong. Like, yeah, you like, can tell I they're see... full. You can, no, I, I you think can see where the dinosaur uh, genetics is, like, just fucking smashing yeah. people up, walking it off. Yeah. I'm thinking, like, you know, that's actually, like, those are a good set of trade offs. That's like you've really thought about your character, like, when you do, you're rolling. Yeah, they, the thing is, they they need if they had a little bit person more personalities, uh, humans would love them. Like they'd be in the looked after oh, category yeah. of animals. Like if they could just show a little uh, bit more you know, emotion, people would love them. Like, you say that, mate. Humans are just assholes. They're just when it comes to pets, no one's in it for the long haul. Dogs hit that sweet spot because dogs like and cats because they are personable. They're sort of pleasant to look at enough that we can personify like yeah. you know they have they have human-esque emotions and they don't live a hundred years yeah right I don't, yeah, that's a, but a tortoise a sweet spot is like they have super low maintenance like what do you do for a tortoise but throw a couple of leaves oh yeah it's you know strawberry I mean? yeah, you ain't gonna do treat. nothing so yeah. if he was like i don't know if it was a little bit more motive like you said like a dog if it was like happy to see you or follow you around the house, I reckon people would love talk. Mm. Says, like, but... but you see, the, the you know, when it comes to like stuff like parrots, right? Parrots have loads of personality, you can fucking talk, ah, you can have a wicked bond with a parrot. Or... No, not all parrots, they're mate. More, yeah, they're all loud, but they're loud. Even a well trained parrot yeah, is going to be loud. They can be. Not all, though. Like some oh, do fucking, keep I'd themselves never to be themselves. Able to live like... near a parrot, but... See, I, I, I'm all right with parrots, but like, mate. It's unreal. Like, people people buy these birds, right? And they insist on getting them young because everyone's like, I'll train it to talk. And it is just mimicry, obviously, yeah. right? I'll train it to talk and we'll have a relationship. And they get five years in and they go, I can't handle this. It's His doing my fucking head in. As fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's because it's like having a toddler, but they they never evolve. They never get yeah, past that stage. Screaming. Yeah, they keep screaming and running around needing constant attention and affection, like, especially if you don't get them a playmate. Because obviously they're highly social. So people just give them away. There's like a rescue parrot sanctuary not fucking far uh, from where I live. And it, mate, it's like, 
These parrots are like 15 years old and they're already fucking people are like, get the fuck out of yeah. my house, I can't handle it. You know, so it's not about personality, mate. It's just people just people yeah, don't want I mean. a high maintenance pet annoy you. for a they long don't time. Make noise. I don't know what tortoises shit is like, but I, I'd imagine it's not disgusting. It's not like on the level of dog shit or something. Like I bet it's like little pebbles similar to rabbit shit, I would assume, because they eat similar foods. Yeah, you know what, mate? Looks looks pretty a bit rabbity. Like, yeah, I'll just show you. Obviously, you don't have to bring it up on stream because you know, <laughs> like I'm not in I'm not in jog pants farting down a mic, so obviously I'll be out of order. Like, but uh, here you go. Well, just Google it, mate. I just Google tortoise shit. Have a look at that top one. Oh, shit. It just looks like, you know, when you've oh, had, Oh, like, that's more grotesque than I was expecting. Yeah, you know, when you... It does look oh, a bit human, doesn't it? No, I don't like that, but... Oh, oh, you don't I like, you don't like the torture. Like, it's no, like, no. hey, what? Yeah. Well, basically, you know when you've had, like, a mad... Uh, you know when you've had a mad dehydration... Uh, yeah. I don't like that, but never mind. Yeah. I thought it would be... That is pretty grotesque. Like that's another that's another con on the top ice list. Mm. So, all right. Well, you know, just uh, just saying. But anyway, all irrelevant. It was a turtle, Dorman yeah. and Nan. Another <laughs> another classic American story. Uh, in a in a dance as old as time. And I didn't look. I wasn't looking at this other thing because I just don't know. I can't remember how bad this was or whether it was just going to creep you out or whatever. Let me just have a quick read of this. Because... Uh, da, da, da. Oh, yeah, I remember now. I remember this story. Oh, yeah, it's a wild one. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get it all set out. But uh, <laughs> in your spare time, Sam, look up vampire facials. Look up that. It's not what you think, by the way. Right. <laughs> do, do be careful googling that. I would suggest, but it's a beauty. It's a beauty technique. It's like m mad controversial, right, okay. and there's a ton of stories and drama about it. Um, right. Anyway, um, here's one for you. We'll go to Europe, uh, as I'm sure you know. Again, <laughs> the theme of this is outrageous stereotype stories um now you know uh ball b a s e l i think it's pronounced ball isn't it it's in switzerland right i have no idea no i don't right. they got you know a football team that plays in europe oh ba United, like spelled like basil yeah like basil but right, it's pronounced okay. bar, like basil like in that. my world like. yeah 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 i know basil so, <laughs> they say basil everyone calls it ball in fucking on on british tv that's no joke by the way you can google that like is it actually buzzle or bustle or Basel? but yeah they all call it ball when you're watching the uh, when, when when you watch like oh, the Champions french League. pronunciation so it's that's maybe, maybe oh it's how they say it in french is it right well yeah so obviously switzerland they got french they got german but yeah basically yeah they say it like that ball um, so anyway, this is a, a Swiss city where um, a <laughs> member of their local uh, government has come up with um, a, a, a solution to the uh, homeless uh, problem. Um, and uh, they don't have a big homeless problem in Switzerland. And they do now, far be strategy, like to send them away somewhere else. <laughs> so, here's a bus ticket. Set out for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, mate, <laughs> the um, they decided they're going to do a new scheme to help beggars, and it's called "We will give you a train ticket anywhere you want." Wait, why go. is that everyone's strategy? Like, why is that just but, everyone's but it getting must the fuck out be of one it? way? Why is yeah. that always the strat? Yeah, so they basically say, like, you know, whatever, you can go anywhere, we'll get you up, but it must be one way. It's like when they kick out the bar, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, fuck off. Yeah, exactly. um, so this was in the um, local uh, papers from there. They, they've they also been paying for people's flights as well. <laughs> like, fuck just you like now. This, yeah, we'll fly you home, maybe. Like, um, how long have you? How long have you got to be here until they send you out? Like you can get a one-way flight to anywhere if you go to Switzerland first. 
I know, yeah. I'm, what am I? People do? might be it's worried though if you start making one way flights to Switzerland, you might get a if few I'm... phone calls. Oh, true. Like, yeah, might so get a we've few just noticed Richard... you've got the one way flight to Switzerland. Is everything? Yeah, right? don't worry. I'm gonna make them fly me out. Like, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Basically, what we'll do is we'll go backpacking around Europe, right? We'll go to Switzerland, and then. Just to get the next flight to the next country over. Me and you will have a night of begging. Yeah, we'll send you anywhere. I'll go to fucking Australia, please drive. One way. No bother. Florida will do it. And then you just go to the embassy in Australia. Oh, I'm I'm stranded here. I'm I'm going to go go, uh, drop turtles off an overpass. Have a good time out there. (laughs) But yeah, basically. Pretend I'm a hawk. Yeah. uh, (laughs) 31 people have uh, taken up the offer 14 from romania seven from belgium uh sorry seven from belgium seven from germany two from italy probably that guy who hasn't gone into work for 15 fucking years and one from france um uh, the the uh, switzerland in general has little tolerance for beggars in 2014 a, wo- a woman begging on the streets of geneva was fined 500 Swiss francs when she was unable to pay the fine because she's begging. Yeah, because she's begging, obviously. Like, (laughs) You gotta love that. Like, People really don't fucking think shit through. I'm begging, I've got no money. Like, you're fined. But I've got no money to pay the fine. Well, if you ain't gonna listen to the rules, you can get the fuck out of here. So, unable to pay the fine, uh, the woman was placed in detention. For five days, I guess that means Arrested prison. Arrested for five days, like, for bag. Mm, Bit harsh. Yeah, for having a bag, like. Uh, and then in 2016, the government uh, of the Swiss, uh, of Vaud, V-A-U-D, they just banned begging. Just outright. So... Just said, <laughs> None of that. <laughs> no more begging. Yeah, no more begging, right? That's, that's, a, begging's illegal now. But I'm hungry. Fuck up. Yeah, yeah fuck up. Switzerland, we don't do that round here. None of that begging round here. Um, so yeah, just a unique solution. Get the fuck out. Here's the ticket. Outrageous. Uh, now look, I, I know I said uh, we were gonna. Oh, mate, here's one for you. Uh, nearly, nearly let this one slip by. Now, you know my feeling about K-pop, right? Yeah. You know where I'm at with it. I am I am not a big fan of K-pop at all. And I think I go so far as to say that if you are a fan of K-pop, um, it, it, sh- it should just be in the DSM-5. It, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, if you're overly invested in K-pop and you actually pretend to like it as some sort of mad virtue signaling exercise to other k-pop fans or whatever uh if you're the type of person that's on twitter posting should have stan luna when like a beloved actor dies tragically young or something uh yeah you, you're just mentally ill you should just you're, you you know there's just no getting away from that um now it it pains me uh to be on the side <laughs> Of somebody of Luna. so <laughs> no, <laughs> um, of somebody so evil. But I don't know if you saw this uh, in North Korea. <laughs> Kim Jong Un um, basically said uh, he wants to crack down on K-pop fans, uh, and he described it as a vicious cancer. <laughs> now you know, you know that onion meme person person you can't stand <laughs> makes great point um now he does go a bit too far because Fucking he says no, yeah this, it, yeah the other two parts <laughs> of the headlines have been man like yeah now listen i what i've done is sam i've done that trick where you layer it in stages i had to ease people in sam to get them to come along for the ride. And so people were going, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, K-pop, actually, there's a lot going on in that industry. It's a terrible industry. Uh, and then, yeah, okay, the full headline is Ki- Kim Jong-un labels K-pop a vicious cancer that merits work camps and execution. Now, I, I, deliberately, le- I deliberately left off the last bit, Sam. You have, you have caught me out there. You have caught me at my little game. 
Uh, because he has gone a bit too far there, hasn't he? He's gone a bit overboard. Uh, not even I would, <laughs> as much as I hate K-pop and have been the victim. What I want to know is where where's he made this statement? Like, where like is what? has he got a Twitter? Like, where does Kim Jong Un just present these statements to the world? Where everybody really wants me. Like, it's all state media in in North so, Korea. So it's basically like it's been leaked to other press of like this is what he's no, saying. No, he, he no, I don't think you would stand up. North Korea works, mate. He just says I've got something to say. <laughs> right, which is, I know also that's the start of a uh, of Last Caress by the Misfits. <laughs> I've got something to say. And then they just go, oh, g- great glorious leader has something to say in all the TV oh, yeah. stations. I understand yeah. why North Korea, you're, but I, that's what I mean. It yeah. must be like whistleblowers passing over information like, yeah, he's wild and out like he says he wants to kill the like, K-pop fans. Because <laughs> it's not like, you know, nobody's watching it anywhere else in the world. It's not going to beam to fucking iPlayer, is it? You can't watch the font anywhere. Yeah, well, obviously, people have to monitor North Korean yeah, I guess state media. Because like, yeah, cause when, cause when he's coming out and going, yeah, we're just going to go test some rockets. <laughs> you know, yeah. you need to know that kind of thing, don't you? So, obviously, they know about it. But anyway, look, so um, <laughs> Kim Jong-un is cracking down on K-pop fans amid increasing cultural influence from South Korea. The 37-year-old, God, is that all he is? Fucking Mike, hell, I don't remember that, like... My oh, also knows. true, yeah. I mean, it, it is taught out there that he invented the light bulb and shit. Oh, was that his dad? That's that was his dad, wasn't it? Dad invented the light bulb. Well, isn't the old theory they're like they're all one? So technically, the current leader oh, did everything. Probably, mate. Probably glorious leader. And all the yeah, other leaders died, did everything the current the leader did. Yeah, like, you might be right, Sam. I don't know. Never, I never been to North Korea. Researching that Vice documentary, like. Mm. Oh, back when Vice did journalism. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when that guy crossed the border and he recorded it. Yeah. So, uh, amid increasing cultural influence from South Korea, the 37-year-old North Korean leader is imposing harsh penalties on citizens caught listening to perverse K-pop music. The secretive anti-K-pop campaign came to light through internal documents that were smuggled out of the Democratic there People's Republic of Korea by a soul based news agency. Fucking hell. Fuck out of know, mate. Like, oh, look, you were got... doing some real journalism. Oh, it. mate. The stone. Yeah. Imagine it, though. Oh, we got these super secret government documents from North Korea. Right. Let's have a look. And it's just him rambling yeah, about okay, K-pop. Fun, like, fun. You're like, oh, Where's fucking I could have been killed for that. Could have been killed for K-pop. Like. Anyway, uh, this was reported in the West uh, via the New York Times. Uh, The newly slimmed down DPRK Despot had dubbed the Southern Cultural Import a vicious cancer corrupting Northern Korean youths uh, with their attire, hairstyle, speeches, behaviors, and uh, and dancing a la in the 80s movie Footloose. <laughs> Dancing like Footloose. <laughs> He's got his finger on the pulse, mate, to be yeah, fair. No, that that old, that old like... Kim Jong-un, like, yeah, he's got his finger on the pulse. Like, it's corrupting the youth it's by kind dancing of nice like It's nice to you, though. Like, it is nice to you that even in North Korea, like, obviously, it is... What, going... everyone's it... mental? No, they're like, they are still getting modern meat. You know what I mean? Obviously, it isn't that tight of a scene. Oh, I see. Journalists are getting in and out. They're experiencing other cultures. They know what's going on. So, like, even though there is this big thing of they're all getting brainwashed. This is probably a bold proclamation, but I think the North Korea we know probably isn't here in 20 years. I think that's... Yeah, which is great. You know, it'd be like, you know, I'll well, through what we The worry, I think that's pretty down. much guaranteed. The worry is, how is it going to go out? Is he going to, is it going to be all guns blazing, final fucking oh, destruction like, or is it going to be. I don't even think. You, you know what I mean? I don't the even The worry think. is, right, in 10 years. What, what have they really got be... going on in North Korea, like? But that's what I mean. In 10 years, it's going to be easy for them to get shit, I reckon, mate. Because oh, all they're nah. going to get is, like, what, an ICB. And it hasn't even got to be, like, America or something. They could just bomb South Korea. I'll be just as fucking grotesque. What I reckon What what, what I reckon is that, we, you know, put, put it this way, right? If we look at all of the nations, right, and we give them an identity... In, in like imagine them in the schoolyard or down the pub or whatever right age appropriate for you and then you you say all the nations who's the artist right who would fuck you up and who's soft as shit like i could definitely tech you like i don't think i think North no Korea's i think right he's soft as shit like, but the problem is he's a soft cunt who carries a knife 
And just as you're battering him as he goes down, is he going to stab you? That's what I mean. Like, is, he might just uh, nuke his right. own country out of fucking spite. Like, fuck it, I'll drop it on myself. That's the worry. Yeah. But yeah, again, no, I, I, have they even got anything? I don't know. Man. I feel like they probably have, man. Because they've, there's no doubt they've got some scientists there. And it's like, we've had the, the nuke since fucking yeah. World War II, mate. So they've probably figured out some kind well, of fucking nuke. Our nuclear capability's been deployed after our top scientist was caught listening to K-pop. Yeah! <laughs> it's all over, mate. Should have so, stand uh, Luna. Yeah, yeah should have stand Luna. Um, anyway, uh, in, in an apparent bid to launch his own brand of cancel culture, uh, Kim has introduced new laws uh, as of December stipulating anyone caught watching or possessing South Korean content especially K-pop, could be sentenced up to 15 years hard labour. Oh, imagine yeah. getting that for looking at a bit of... You definitely should have stand Luna at that point. Like, you'd yeah. be fucking... 15 years hard labour, Smashing rock. I don't even know what it had. Just, to, just to see like, BTS, like... What is that? Like, mining, I guess. What else is hard labour? Like, working in... Oh, hot mate. Well, in the cartoons, when I was growing yeah, up, smashing rocks, but... and all that. It was just, like, you smashing rocks with a pickaxe, which I've never understood, because who are you doing yeah. that for? What do you need smaller rocks for? Like, why, why do yeah. you break on the rock? Unless they're yeah, digging yeah. something out, but they were never digging anything out. They were just smashing rocks, like... The previous maximum punishment was only five years. <laughs> <laughs> only five years of mining. <laughs> yeah. right, and if really that wasn't off, harsh was enough, wait, listen to this. If this wasn't harsh, harsh enough, K-pop smugglers uh, could even face execution oh, wh no. while, uh, while caught, those caught singing speaking or writing in a South Korean style what the fuck you now could be sentenced to two years at a work camp so yeah fuck it mate I'm, a citizen was killed by a firing squad for selling bootleg South Korean music and other entertainment like fuck you now yeah it takes a dark turn it's like it's a funny headline to begin with and then just horrific tyranny and States but the thing is, murder, I remember yeah. South Korea used to do the thing where they drop in like K dramas and K pop, like they actually yeah they did do that. stuff in. They should, it sounds like you should do our mix. The smugglers getting fucked. If he South Korea should be taken on the chin. Yeah, but then if you, what are you gonna do? Like, yo, oh, you run down to the beach. Oh, I'll just go pick this up. Blow. Not worth yeah. it, is it? For fucking K pop, mate. Not worth it. But yeah, mate, a crazy story. So desperate. Uh, to stop South Korean influence in North Korea, um, they uh, they've just decided, yeah, we're just going to ramp it up and just execute anyone that's caught in possession of it. Um, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> News from North Korea. There's a North Korean uh, stereotype: just wanton murder and no freedom. Um, now, I did say we were going to uh, talk about this on the next. I hate it here. So I don't know, mate. If you if you're bad? ready, no. We I, uh, we talked about it a little bit when we were watching the football. Um. Oh no no no! Actually, I'll, I'll hold off. We're, we're gonna we're gonna. I've teased it twice now, but I did forget this links. So Russia has ba banned a type of anime. Right. <laughs> while we're at it, so while K-pop's getting it in North Korea, Russia and all together. Uh, different um, different country. Uh, now, to be fair, I am taking this from the Anime Daily. Uh, <laughs> so maybe I'll grab, I'll just quickly grab, I, I trust CBR.com to report on comics. Um, but yeah, basically, they've banned a type of anime. Now, I don't know what isekai anime is, but apparently uh, uh, it's a genre where the person is reborn in a world that's like totally different from where they originate. And apparently it's really, really yeah. popular in, in Japan right now. Uh, so, um, wait, I don't get what... It's an anime where you are re like reincarnated. It's a, it's it's like a genre else. anime where the comment, so the, the thing, the trope of the genre is you are like reborn into a world that's like so you know like for would, me growing up because he's in a different yeah, world something like that. 
Yeah, yeah. You you wake up. Oh, I'm in a different world. Bloody hell! It's got right, dragons okay. and that. Yeah. So is it? So it's a Kai anime. Now I'm probably totally wrong, and I'm glad I'm wrong. I'm not a weeb. Weeb's out. Fuck all of you weebs. But anyway, the point of the story is um, that that uh, particular genre is super, super popular. And as all popular anime proliferates, because everyone has, again, has to pretend to like these god-awful te teenage-focused children's cartoons because they want to fit in with internet culture, uh, despite them having absolutely no artistic merit whatsoever. Uh, and just most of them being ten a penny throwaway garbage, the equivalent in a lot of ways of watching those ridiculous soaps you see, like Days of Our Lives, except a cartoon, and so it doesn't even require any acting. Um, but this this genre of anime has got really popular, and it's made its way to Russia. So Russian censors, which we all know, they do love a censor. Uh, they've decided that because this particular genre is teaching the idea that death leads to reincarnation right. and that reincarnation is more fulfilling than the life you have here, that it's actually corrupting to the youth, uh, a worry to parents, uh, and, uh, and could encourage suicide. And on that basis, they have decided that they're going to ban this particular genre of anime. It's just not going to be allowed anymore. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Russia has seen a huge spike in suicides. And I'm not talking the type that Putin does for you. I'm talking uh, actual suicides. They're third globally in the world. I had no idea it was that high, actually. And so they're trying to sort of look at ways for that, what ways to sort of you know, reduce that number. And instead of looking at, you know, I don't know, some of the more oppressive aspects of their society, yeah. they've decided, no, what we need it's the is... the anime. Yeah, it's the anime that is to blame. Um, so, there you go. So, yep. K-pop's gone. Anime's gone. Totalitarians and despots of the world <laughs> unite against weebs. I'm getting a little bit worried, Sam. How long before my weebs out emote on my channel is deemed to be bigoted or a sign of approval for Kim Jong un or something ridiculous? <laughs> Who knows? Um, right. Now we can do it. Virtual influencers, Sam. That's where we're at now. That's where we're at. We live in a world, right, inf real influencers are bad enough. You know how I feel about this. One of the things, so for us, I don't know, uh, me and Sam, we're always, and God knows why, because this, this would be the type of content they would be sponsoring. But, you know, people always come around and they go, wow, you've got a great community. It's, even if 70% of them are Finnish. And... <laughs> You've got, you've got a great community and uh yeah you know we'd really like to sponsor your shit and uh and you go okay that's cool you're the type of sponsor i'd like to work with because you real you recognize uh what what it is i do and and what it is i've built and how i don't want to you know there, there's a there, there's a level in there you know like i like turning on my stream and getting a few thousand people that watch me just talk about whatever it is i want to talk about and I'd hate it if it was 20,000. Uh, and I'd also hate it if I was doing like that, if I was stuck in that kind of, you know, in that jail that like you see a lot of streamers get to, where they're dependent on a game, you know, or dependent on a trend or a fad, and they have to do the same thing over and over again. I'd hate that. that like, what is the difference, by the way, of if you're one of those streamers and you have to get up and play like fucking Fortnite for eight hours, let's say, because your success is inextricably linked to the success of that game and your ability to play it and the audience you've cultivated while playing it. What's the difference between that and, say, doing anything else for eight hours that you also could be doing? It, you know, it's it, 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 fuck that. Not for me. It has to be what I want to do when I want to do it. And people can get on board with it or they can fuck off and I'll be all right. And as I've said, we all end up D-man. All of, all of us broadcasters, <laughs> you always become D-man. We all do in the end. 
you know, you just end up you, like, go look five years ago at all the top Twitch streamers from five years ago, and then go five years back from that and look at all the top Twitch streamers from that, and then ask yourself where are they now? And it's great because they get in, they get out. Um. The worst ones are the ones that stick around and always think that it's going to happen again and you're going to get a second fucking wind. You're going to get a second opportunity. You know, it's like it's why I can like I can almost admire Ninja, right? He grinded for 10 years. He had a massive blow in popularity. He promoted games. He got the bag. He did the Super Bowl commercials. He did everything. And now he's just chilling. And that's that. And he never has to work again. And now he says, I want to make games. I don't even necessarily want to stream or anything. You know, I want to move on to other projects. And that's cool. I like that. He, gr he grinded for a decade. It paid off big. And he realizes that, you know, you're never going to have that period again. It's never going to be like that again. Not all streamers do. You get a lot of streamers that, like, you know, fucking keep constantly coming out. You know, like your favorite. What's it called? Wing Wings of Death. Is it? Wings of Death. Oh, Wings of Redemption. Wings. Wings of Redemption, sorry. Yeah. Wings of Death is the league player. Not you, mate. You're all right. <laughs> Wings of Redemption. Hunted you off for no reason. Sorry, man. <laughs> Was talking about the, the, the fat housebound Call of Duty player, not you. You're all right, buddy. You're all right. Um, <laughs> Was talking about a, a shut-in. Uh, that giant show. But, like, he's just like, right, you're not even having fun. Like, <laughs> you're not having fun streaming people are only watching to see your misery it's like he's like that sad fucking animal at a zoo that if it had a possible thumbs it'd kill itself but it doesn't so it just has to sit there all day like while humans hey look look i think it's crying i think the animal's crying and it's uh... it's like have you ever read that short story um uh what's it called uh i have no mouth but i must scream <laughs> no i haven't right it's by Harlan Ellison. Uh, it's a classic. You'll love it. Basically, I'll just give you the gist. I won't ruin it. I know you don't read, but maybe one day, Sam, you are going to pick up a, what you are gonna reading pick up for? a book. Yeah. What are you reading for? So anyway, um, it, it was made in... It was people in the chat going, wow, I, I think I've played that game. Yes, if you, if you were an old school point-and-click adventure enthusiast, it, it, it's, a, it's a classic. Uh, it, it's, it really it was ahead of its time. But anyway... Basically, it's about a supercomputer, and I haven't read it in fucking ages, so apologies for some of the details, Fuzzy, but you'll get the gist, Sam. It's about a supercomputer that becomes intelligent, and like any intelligent creature would realise, humanity's the problem. So it just decides to trigger a fucking global thermonuclear meltdown war that wipes out all of humankind. Um, and then, but then he realizes the, the, the computer, I'm going to be alone and I'm going to be bored if all humanity's dead. Cause you know, what am I going to do? So he keeps like six or seven. I always, uh, I can't remember the exact number. He keeps six or seven humans alive using his advanced technology to just prolong their life and what he does is for reasons i don't really know he puts them in their own little mad personal hell right so they're 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 in they're in their own little mad tormented world that's all based on the lives they had when they were humans and they just lived the same nightmare over like and over again saw but in perpetuity like yeah but anyway, one one of the humans basically figures out a way that they can kill all the others and give them the sweet release of death. But in doing that, is denied. He gets caught doing it and is denied the sweet release of death. So the computer turns him into this fucked up amorphous blob who literally can only think and can't move its body. And that's where the title comes from. It's the last line. I have no mouth. Uh, but I must scream, and he's just stuck like that for eternity. Um, so, uh, anyway, uh, that is Wings of Redemption. Is <laughs> that that <laughs> he has no mouth? Well, he does have a mouth. You can see that, but he he has no mouth, Sam. But he must scream, and people just turn up. They just turn up, don't they? To just watch him and torture him, and he he breaks down all. He breaks down all the time, doesn't he, on, on camera? And he's there like, oh, I can't take this anymore. You fucking asshole, please. I'm not even making any money. And it's like, <laughs> he's like some mad, tormented creature. People just throwing chips at him. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Like, it's like, it, it's like, just why wouldn't you just quit I know and go away? Anything like, else, but yeah, anything, anything else. Yeah, just anything else. 
anything else like so uh, you know uh, d- what i'm saying is uh, Look, you're listening. <laughs> what i'm saying is you know uh, when streamers stick around and it's like you've had your time because he was well liked and was popular well, at one point. ages ago, yeah. Yeah. You had, that, you had that beef. I don't know how much you cared about fucking Call of Duty commentary back in the day, but I did because I was a fucking teenager. I know you used to basically had a 1v1 then. with Syndicate. Yep. And he, right. And Syndicate was playing on dog shit NA ping. And he beat him, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, what, the guy, his friend, what he's like, ah, oh, you know, oh, I said Lucky Wings. I know how it feels, but he's like, shut the fuck up, man. Why the fuck are you stream that shit? You fucking I- I- idiot. And he just full out, had a full breakdown, mate. Fully mental breakdown. So basically, they, they did a podcast before, and the old time he was flaming Syndicate, the streamer, because like, he was a zombies player. He's like, you ain't fucking good at multiplayer. Yeah. Why are you talking about COD? All you know about is zombies. Just roasted him. The old time he's like, oh, that's fine. You can say that. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> just fully taking the nice. He's like, why do you fucking want me on me? And he's like, all right, yeah, sure, I will. And they just battered him, and he was fuming, mate. And then ever since then, he was just fucked in the head like his head went. Yeah, and, and you know, it's like, listen, you know, just when it's when it's when it's over, and you hit that tipping point where you're not as popular, you're not making money, you don't even really have an audience. You just have a collection of tormentors. <laughs> you should you should yeah, probably this, stop. Yeah, this guy... and that's what I mean. This is what I'm saying. It comes to us all if you stick around long enough eventually like if you don't change the world will change around you and you will no longer fit in people will no longer care people will grow up people will move away so you just have to enjoy it and make hair while the sun shines yeah and he was just event- a cunt to all his friends because the thing is right if he just wasn't a cunt to his friends perfect thing he'd do is what could what could he do even though he's overweight he has he say he has no skills well he can edit youtube videos well it just so happens he's friends with a shit ton of youtubers so maybe he could be like look i'm fucking done with the shit can i just edit your youtube videos just pay me enough to live in my trailer and i'll never be on the internet again but no he's just a cunt to everyone so all the people who yeah. could have given him a hand up he's like nah but fuck you but no i'm done yeah and and so it's like you know you you can't rely on this right so anyway you know you can't rely on this to p- make a living forever you just can't you know you gotta you gotta deal with the things so anyway i don't like influencer culture because that's the new thing. Like back, there was something almost pure in a way, even though there was always contrivances to it. But when you were a streamer, back in the days before the the I word, the, the word influencer, when you were a streamer, right? It was you, a fucking webcam, and whatever you were doing. And people, had, uh, people sort of had to like you, right? And you were presenting yourself and that was what the relationship was predicated on. It was nice at the start. Then it got a little bit weird somewhere along the line. Like, I want to say when, um, what was that fucking game now? The Descent or whatever, you know, where everyone started, like, pretending. And suddenly you got into this, like, arms race of who could scream more about a pig man chasing you in a video game. You know, remember that? Amnesia or whatever. Amnesia, that was it, yeah. that That's ironic. I forgot the name. <laughs> uh... But you you know, there, there was like this weird arms race where suddenly there was there was streamers, and there was popular streamers, and then there was the type of streamer that was willing to fake a reaction on camera to keep you engaged, and they sort of went on to become the influencers, didn't they? They that was like the proto influencer, and then by definition, I don't like influencers because influencers are people who sell their influence for money. And so how can you trust anything they say if they call themselves an influencer? So I've had people offer to sponsor me and say, you know, we think you're a great influence. And I'm like, I'm out immediately now. Don't care how much money it is because, you know, at the end of the day, I understand, I'll sell you a product if I like it. And I think it's like not going to harm anybody or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I'll, you can put it on my stream and I'll I'll do a ad read. No different in a way to doing an ad read on telly. The only difference is I vet stuff probably more carefully, <laughs> right? Than what a what a TV company might do. Um so I don't like I don't like that influencer culture. But we've evolved some. We've gone into the next stage. Virtual influencers. So this is people who aren't real. <laughs> right? People who aren't real, 
pretending to be people selling whatever it is they're fucking selling to their audience who follow them even though they're not real and that's how we end up with the nightmare of john pork mate <laughs> all right now i remember yes now you remember so for those who didn't see it, because I think we just floated it while we were watching. Remember when Wales were in the tournament, Sam? You remember that? Remember, remember what even Wales? is this fucking website, but I'm going to be sick. I actually feel ill, but what is this website, but? What? The way it looks? Virtualhumans.org. Like, like why uh, is yeah, this I, a I thing? Know, like... But yeah, but look, I can click on this it. This is create creepy influence. as fuck, uh, yeah. but. Yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not a rabbit hole I was going to go down on air, but, like, yeah, when you when you have some spare time... Mate, look how creepy yeah, these I know. pictures yeah. are, but, oh, my God. Cause, mate, we're, we're, entering, we're entering a fucking unbelievable period of time, you know, VTubers. I, I saw there was some famous VTuber quit recently, and all of the... There was a bunch of teenage, I miss you, pretend cartoon influence and obviously it's like the real person behind it fucked off and just isn't going to do it anymore because they've made money i i you know i, I don't know it's like so you look at off. someone you look at someone like um you know like uh code miko for example yeah right? and that's really clever and yeah, i like that i think that's brilliant yeah. right that's true and, and, and of course you know twitch fucking Twitch give her a hard time because yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, Twitch hate her, of course. What's that? She's like, a creative streamer working really hard to make new stuff. Yeah, fucking hate you, like. <laughs> yeah, hate you, like. Hate you, right? When are you, right? When are you gonna start farting down a microphone instead? You fucking get in crazy. line. Yeah, get in line. So you know she's great. Like basically for me, the way I think it's, it's hilarious when you think about it. You know, for, prior to that, I would have said it was Doctor Disrespect. You create a virtual character. Right, you create yeah. a virtual character, you just do comedic improv in character, doing whatever it is you're doing, and then she's took that to the next level. I'll say it, I think she's an evolution of that form, and is one of the best streamers on Twitch, actually. <laughs> right, like, unquestionably. And there's an incredible tech aspect to it. But equally, for every one of them, there's someone who just downloads VTuber and just has a cartoon morphed over their face. And, like... I'm sort of secretly, like, you know, fucking an I know anime artists and stuff, like, and they're always telling me about this stuff, and it's like, it's a big fucking deal, mate. They've got yeah, their own... Yeah, big money in it, I know that. No, even, mate, they get mad territorial. Like, Pokemon did a couple of streams, because she's like, listen... Yeah, I remember that. I get it, mate. You don't want to get all done up like a fucking dog's dinner just to stream D. You know I mean? I, I, again, I don't. It's fucking hell, it would do my head in. Imagine if you had to put, like, makeup on and look nice. you got you got to present yourself a certain way every time you go on there. So, yeah, maybe it would be super cool to do a couple of streams where it's just a cartoon Richie Lewis doing this and that and just sit here in a, in a white vest like Tony Soprano eating Fruit Loops while I'm doing fucking streaming. That might be cool. So Pokemon did it a few times where she had like a little virtual thing. They all went crazy. You're already your big established streamer. How dare you take away the hard effort of real VTubers. None of it's real. Like what are you talking about? Anyone can do it if you want. Why, why can't poke him in? But no, yeah. he went after it for that. I saw... Shadow apologised for that. Do you know Poker Lols? He does the same thing where he makes himself yeah. a fucking uh, potato and stuff sometimes. Mate. I, I was thinking I might do that. No, when people say ask for a Santa, I might have a little fucking potato in the bottom, mate. That'd be great. I'd do a potato. That's as far as V2, but I'm willing to go, mate. Yeah. I'll be a fruit or a vegetable, like. Yeah. Mad. It's just mad. But we're entering a, we're entering a time in history, Sam, where nothing... Right. We got fucking deep fakes. <laughs> we got deep fakes. We got audio replicators. We got VTubers and now virtual influencers. People are creating virtual identities. And in the case of John Pork, I've picked John Pork out, right? Because I think he's the worst example of this trend. This is creepy, like. Yeah. So for those who don't know, John Pork is a, is a, a person. Pretending to be a pig human hybrid <laughs> who calls himself basically the coolest pig in the world. Right? And he goes around, Sam, 
but he doesn't because he's not real. Yeah. But he but but he does. He goes around and he's he's a pig, Sam. And he goes around and he just pretends to have like a good time and meeting people and that. Me, I can't right. handle this quote. Have you read the last quote? Do you wanna do you wanna read it? He's, he's, he's often it. the first person in a signal boost any fan out sent his way, and this engagement just goes to show his laid back pig, but also a dude demeanor. Fucking grow up. He's a, he's a laid back pig and a dude, mate. But look at that. There, here he is. On the streets of Palermo, Italy. Back in he Palermo, might, Italy. Maybe it's the sailor, mate. Maybe that's why he's going to charge his phone every day. He lost his mind. He had to become a pig. He had to have someone else on that ship with him, mate. Yes, John. Well, like Fight you Club. are my greatest friend, John. Hawk Club. Yeah. Uh, but look, here he is as well. Here he is. Chilling with my homies. Now... I don't even want... I can't break this down in my mind. What, Like, what is... Right. That picture in particular, Sam, that second one. There are so many questions. So, does he... Does he go to the bar... Like, are, first of all, are these people his real friends? Yeah, right? I don't get it. Like... Right? Then, are they... Are they actually chilling? Because he said, right, he takes photos with his fans. So does that what does that mean? People send him a photo, send him a photo of them with a gap next to him, and he said, yeah, them see, a photo yeah, of him vr in, like, yeah. So is he doing that? And or what? Like what? What is what is going on with John Paul? Like so, uh, but then is it so? First, is it? A, is, is he is he actually there? The, is the man yeah, in is place? He wearing a John suit Paul? or is he, yeah, yeah. Is he and then and then like does he does he just edit the face? He's got pig hands as well. Or look at his he's got weird piggy hands in that picture. He's yeah, got he's got lumpy got piggy hands. fingers. Yeah. Like yeah, he has got lumpy fingers, man. I don't know yeah, where you got, got fucking hooves for a start, but sure, like I guess you got. Fingers. Well, I mean, it would it's gonna limit his glove sponsorship deals yeah. if he does that. So, so basically, virtu this is the virtual influencers. So, what you can do is you can send John Pork a business email. Grow up in there. Who, who's sponsoring John Pork? Like, who the fuck? Like, who, 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 who wants John Pork? I don't get it. it <laughs> Like, unless he's doing sponsorships for, like, meat companies or something. No, like. you see, you can't. I, I knew you were going to say it. How can you have John like, Paul yeah, sponsor bacon? Himself, yeah. That's cannibalism, isn't it? Yeah, true. How could you do a... But what else? What's he going to... Pig feed? Like, that's a very limited market for advertising pig feed. David Cameron sex tape? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, mate. A butcher's that doesn't do pork, like a fucking uh, halal butcher or um, yeah. kosher butcher, like. I don't know, mate. Kosher butcher don't... sponsorship could bang. No, but it, like, so hang on. What, what's this here? Like, he's got his own. He's got his own management company. Like, they do, oh, we mate. are the managers of John Pork. Like, although, yeah, also, if you don't eat pork, you're not gonna want a pig resent, represent new, so that goes out the halal, yeah, of the culture, that's, mate. yeah, that yeah, that's work. all out, yeah. I, mean, I was gonna say, mate, you I I didn't even want to get into it, yeah. You've got I mean, that, that pig won't yeah. fly, you're absolutely right. But look, he's got he's got something called the John Pork Gang, you can just Fuck <laughs> up. No. As if he hasn't called it whatever you call a mate, group of pigs, like a herd or whatever. There's pictures pigs. there's pictures of women uploading pictures of them doing a rock lock, the old six 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 horns, with John Pork you, you, Right. He, he, he's got he, he's got a filter where you can make it look like you've got John Pork tattooed on your head. And people are signing up to the John Pork gang. Fuck you now. But I just don't understand what's going on anymore. 
I'm scared. This is the first time I felt like I I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it either. I already said TikTok is a sire because they're talking about piss talk with your John Pork. But yeah, virtual influencers. No, as I said, Sam, I, what I'll do is when we have some downtime, me and you, we have to go down that rabbit hole and see if we can find any, like... Because imagine... It's like cameo, <laughs> but for non-existent cartoon pig human hybrids. Yeah, pig human hybrids. It's got that one from League of Legends on it, mate. I don't know. You know they made what? You know they made a virtual oh, yeah, singer. Like, yeah, yeah. And then they used like mental health problems to yeah. market her, going, "I've got no confidence, and I'm depressed." and Surely you can all identify with that. It's like, yeah, this is fucking disgusting. Riot Games. <laughs> you never cease to repulse me. Um, she's on there. Seraphine or whatever. So, mate, I'm telling you, like, it, it, it's it's wild. It's wild. There's a guy called Ian Gottlich who is, um, he's like the Giga Chad guy. Right. He's like a giant Giga Chad guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he does cycling, but he's massive. He's too big for a bike, like so. It, it, it's it, it's it's a it's a straight. We'll go down. We'll go. We'll go down. We'll go down the rabbit hole, mate. We'll, we might even do because I want to do some I hate here specials. Um, it's about like we haven't done a didn't happen your fictitious lives one. We haven't done that for ages, so we're definitely gonna do that. And then there's a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, anyway, virtual influencers, John Pork. Right, one last story. Let me pick something out. Um, oh, yeah, this is where we can end. Because uh, it's not often we get it wrong. And I've been meaning to throw this in, but obviously we just never do the show anymore uh, because you have an outrageously bad sleep pattern and I'm always hungover. So combine the two, no content for you. But we're changing it all. We're turning over a new leaf, guys. Uh, John Pork's going to be brought in as the new produ <laughs> producer for when Sam's not around. But, um, right, do you remember that story we did? Uh, on probably two, three episodes, well, probably just two, actually, episodes ago, uh, about the guy who got his uh, dick trapped in, it was like a virtual chastity yeah, belt, yeah, and yeah. trying to control chastity belt, and Vice published that story, right? And we did it, right? Because it, it blew up, and it was viral, so we were like, okay... Well, it was actually a comedian called Lewis Spears, and it was a completely fake story. Um, he Basically, he was about to go on tour, and uh, he wanted to find a novel. He, you know, he's, he does this every time he's got a new tour, new material. He goes out and he trolls the media into um, basically believing some fake fucked up story. Uh, and so, yeah. He actually got... There's a little uh, time, fair play. Yeah, he's been doing it for years. I, I, I was looking into it. There's stuff... for He did it to, like, Rebel Media. He's been doing it since, like, 2014, But I don't get how he sells tickets. I, well, I guess, because he released the video afterwards. But, I mean, wouldn't exactly make me want to go. Like, are you going to be revealing more stories? Well, you mean, how was your actual jokes? <laughs> mm. So, yeah. Uh, and I, the funny thing is... Um, I think he might have done another one since this story broke, which we'll get into at some point. But yeah, basically for this one, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I don't think we got got. I'm not going to say like, oh, apologies. Like I didn't interview the guy or whatever. I always expect, which I don't know why I do, uh, but I always expect journalists in this day and age to do their due diligence, which is obviously, my, that is my failing. And for that, I should apologize, I suppose. But um, but yeah, basically, it was a complete fake story. Uh, it, it was, it didn't happen in the end. Um, so I've been meaning to bring that up. You can go check out the video. It's uh, over on uh, his YouTube channel. Uh, it's called uh, I Tricked Vice into Running a Fake Story and It Went Viral. Um, so there you go. And he put that back, back out in March. That's how long it's been um, since we talk about it. But you can go and watch the full video. It's got some of his stuff. Probably not for me, if I'm being honest. But at the end of the day, I do like a good prank. 
uh, as much as anyone else. Uh, and he absolutely wrecked Vice there. So, um, yes, we, we got got to. Uh, but we are setting the record straight. So there, there it is. That, that'll do. It's an episode that'll of do. I Hate Here. We stopped the bongs, didn't we? We, didn't, we don't even do the bong anymore. We started the bongs. We did that for two episodes and just didn't. Yeah, I feel like but we whatever. use those when there's a load of either ridiculous headlines or really you don't think headlines. you don't think it'd be, it'd be an executed for k-pop's ridiculous enough no one's it hasn't happened yet once it happens like we will bring out the bong for sure right okay a sad bong yeah bong, bong, bong. bong. we'll do it but yeah we're gonna um we're, we're gonna end the show there um <laughs> and get ready to go watch the football which will probably be just as depressing so fuck it let's wrap it up that was the news we wish it wasn't We'll see you on the next episode of I Hate It Here. Ta-da.